Okay, so hi there folks, we're now on our next video in the Mathematics in the Modern World. We're still in our module 1, which is the nature of mathematics. And we are going to talk about in this video about the Fibonacci spiral. Previously, we have talked about the Fibonacci numbers and then going to the Fibonacci sequence. And then we also have talked about the contents of the Libra Abacai, where we first introduced the the origins of the Fibonacci sequence through this um, rabbits of Fibonacci, the idealized rabbits of Fibonacci. And then um, hopefully you saw that the previous videos before this one. So the Fibonacci spiral is a series of connected quarter circles drawn inside an array of squares with Fibonacci numbers for dimensions. So you can see here the, the squares. I'm going to illustrate it in a while. Okay. And then notice that the quarter circles are um, arched. Okay through these squares here. Take note they are squares, okay? They're not rectangles. They have equal side lengths. So, and I'm going to illustrate it in a while. So this Fibonacci spiral gets closer and closer to what we call the Fibon, sorry, the golden spiral. This golden spiral pretty much resembles our golden ratio. Um, take note in a previous video, we have talked about the golden ratio, uh, where, it, um, where it came from, the numbers okay the the sequence of numbers of the fibonacci um, sequence so as it increases in size because of the ratio so um, before we go into dive into more information let's have um, an illustration of that um, fibonacci spiral so um, i want to to for you to um, understand that these are squares and we're going to start with the smallest square um, here so that's obviously this square here so this is a square of length with side length 1. So imagine this is one unit. Okay, so this is one side length unit 1. So we're going to have another uh, square beside that. So specifically this square here, which is which has the same dimension as this square. So this is both of them are side 1. Okay, so both of them are squares of side 1. Now, of course, if we have a square of side 1 here, and a square of side 1 here. So if we're going to add their sides, this would be side length 2. Now, with this side length 2, we're going to expand that. And then we're going to create another square from that. Sorry for my penmanship. Um, you have a square with um, length, uh, side length 2. Now, adding this 1 and 2 here, we have a side length 3 actually here. And we create a square out of that for us to create a square with side length 3. And of course, um, take note, in squares, all the sides are equal, right? So I just want to um, let you remind that. And then with side length 2 here and side length 3, so what we're going to do is we're going to add 2 and 3. What we have is um, a square with side length 5, and we're going to make that as a square. Okay? Now, continuing with this process, I think you will know what will happen here. So let me uh, delete uh, those things. So we have side length 1. We have side length 1 here, side length 2, side length 3, which came from 1 and 2, 1 plus 2 here. We're going to add now 2 plus 3 here to have a square with side length 5. And then I think it's very obvious what will happen now. We have side length 3 here plus side length 5, we will create a square with side length 8. So all the sides of this, uh, of this uh, square here is of length 8. And then next is we have side length 8 here plus side length 5. We can create another square with side length 13. And this we, this actually creates the Fibonacci um, rectangles or and the Fibonacci spirals. Okay, now, the interesting part of what we're going to do here is we're going to arch, okay, um, from the smallest square, which is, of course, with side length 1, we're going to arch from this one all the way out of the bigger squares. Okay, so starting here, we're going to arch, okay, careful not to mess it up, <laughs> okay, I'm, I am actually messing it up, so um, you should have a steady hands here, so we have from this arch going to this arch and then you arch uh, um, going out take note that you should um, be very careful with the arching here it should um, touch that very edge and then you 
you extend and then you extend okay be very careful about that and then you kind of you know try to extend it even more um sorry should have a steady hand with this okay sorry okay so extend ah oh, goodness okay i don't care anymore extend and extend going out okay so um that that is um what we call the fibonacci spiral then so you can always extend this after this we have side length 8 and 13 you need to add those so what we have is side length 21 and then uh, so on and so on then after this okay and it will still be the same um it will still be the same um image which is the fibonacci spiral okay now um we're going to continue with the discussion over here and again as we have said this this fibonacci spiral will get closer and closer to what we call the golden spiral okay which has the 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 values of a golden ratio so let's get onto that okay so the golden ratio here um we have the golden ratio and it is of uh, value phi Okay, this is the the Roman numeral phi, and it has a value. We have talked about this in the second video um, of module one. It has a value of approximately one point six one eight zero three three, or we have rounded it off to zero point three four in this part. So um, we can see here another image of the Fibonacci spiral over here, and then we can see here the A um, has is a square with a with a, with a with a longer length and then b is a square with a shorter length and then we have this a little bit of formula a plus b over a and then have get that ratio from the bigger length from the sum of them um over the uh smaller or the bigger length so get the sum of a and b divided by a or you can get it from a divided by b and what you will have is the phi or the value of the phi is the golden ratio, which is 1.618034 um, approximately. Um, it is known uh, also as the divine proportion, which defines beauty and godlike body during the early years. So actually, you can, if you have read Dan Brown's book um, of you know the Da Vinci Code, uh, this is actually the, that was actually the first time I saw this um, divine proportion here and uh, it defines um, beauty and godlike body okay um, the golden ratio has been the basis in building structures such as the parthenon in greece i'm going to show in a, uh, a picture about that in a later video the sculptures and statues of the gods and goddesses since they are gods and goddesses um, they should have this perfect godlike body um, similarly this practice is still applied in the modern day to maintain a strong substantial and durable buildings and structures even in the cameras one of the grid lines i believe um one of the you can um format before you take a picture you, you put a, a, a grid okay on your um, camera lens or maybe on your on your smartphones one of the choices is the golden ratio okay um so that you will be um, guided with that and actually a lot of modern day logos are based on the golden ratio you know the apple logo the twitter logo i'm going to give you examples of that of how that happened okay in the later video later okay so let's talk about let's uh, wrap it up um, the Fibonacci numbers, generally, this golden ratio or this divine proportion actually goes with many names, the golden section, the golden mean, but let's call it golden ratio over here, okay, or the divine proportion, has interesting implications or implications to man in attaining perfection to what is perceived as aesthetically pleasing and steady. And actually, this value, if you have this value in your body, um, this one example is the length of your of your head to its width if you if it's the golden ratio 1.618 um you're perceived to be um, mathematical beautiful mathematically beautiful um one more instance is the the tip of uh, if you're going to measure the tip of your your heel going to the tip of tip of your head and then you're going to get that measure and divide it get the ratio of it from the tip of your heel going to your hip if it's going to be 1.618 so you have that um generally aesthetic and mathematically 
beautiful body. So um, let's end it there. Um, this is the last part of the module one, Nature of Mathematics. But I, of course, I have a, I need to create one more video about this, uh, citing the examples of this in um, in modern day. Okay. And um, actually the logos, the Parthenon, I'm going to show that to you. And um, a lot more as far as whatever, I, whatever examples that I can offer. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you would like and subscribe. And um, don't forget to share this with your classmates and colleagues. Okay, so thank you very much.